guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a fun little video called Makeup I Don't Regret Not Buying. Now, I've seen Samantha March do these the most. She has like all these series. They get so confusing. I'm like, makeup you what? So did you want to buy it or did you not want to buy it? Anyway, this is my version. So if you're interested, just keep So the first thing is a palette and I'm so glad I didn't buy it. It is the Crayon Case palette. Now when this came out, it looked amazing. I think I saw Jeffree Star use it on his channel and I immediately wanted it. Luckily it was sold out when I first saw it. And then it has been in stock, but then I saw Jen Love's reviews talk about the palette and I was officially just like okay with not buying it. It seemed like the brand was a little bit rough around the edges, they might have been a new brand, they might have been a little bit rude to her or something had happened. And it just kind of turned me off on the whole thing. I don't really want or need another giant colorful eyeshadow palette. I think Lacey from Spooky Lips and Fat Hips also talked about not being very happy about picking the palette up. Nobody really complained about the formula or the performance of the palette, but I honestly am glad I didn't buy it. I think I still get like emails from them whenever the palette is in stock periodically. But for now, I don't have it, don't plan on buying it, and yeah, very proud of it. The thing I'm so glad I didn't buy is the Smashbox Collection with Lada. Now when this first came out, it looked beautiful, holy shit, those highlighters were calling my name. I was just like, should I get it? Should I get it? I think they launched like towards the end of the VIB sale this year in April and I had a chance to get them on sale and I still like put it off and then I just, I don't know, I think I ended up swatching one of the palettes when I came back to the States after being in Sri Lanka and I remember thinking like, oh, thank God I didn't buy it. So yeah, I, I just, I'm glad. They just look very shimmery and just like, mmm and like the packaging was cute but it's like I don't need more highlighters and then a lot of the other stuff in the collection I wasn't really like that excited for they had like a rose gold eyeliner they did like a setting spray type thing and like some like um dew drop type deal like none of that was really appealing to me I really just wanted the um highlighters but I'm glad I skipped it because I didn't need any of that the next thing I'm glad I didn't buy is the Inglot X JLo collection. Now, I actually really like JLo, of course. Like, I'm a like 80s baby, like late 80s, 90s baby. And um, Love Don't Cost a Thing was like everyone's jam. Come on. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so I remember wanting to shop it. I remember, like, every time Trend Mood posted, like, okay, it's out. You can buy it. It's available. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. And I remember looking at the collection on Macy's and I was like, this is incredibly confusing. Like the way things were laid out, it wasn't like easy to shop. And that was like a huge turnout for me. And one of the big reasons why I didn't buy the collection because I like the idea of custom palettes, but I think what they should have done is at least do like options where it was like, here is your suggested brown smoky eye. This is everything you need. Here's like her go-to face palette. Here's everything you need. So there was like a quick option versus like having to sit there because on Macy's you couldn't see the palette. You know some, some custom palettes, like if you go on Sugar Pill, you can like place the shadows and like see what it'll look like before you get it. If you're gonna do something like that, Inglot, like I'm gonna need to see what my palette's gonna look like before it comes in the mail. So because of all of those reasons, I skipped it. Plus the price point, plus I've never tried anything from Inglot. So I think what I might do is next time I go to Vegas, which will be January of 2019, I'll probably stop at the Inglot store because I did see the Inglot store when I was at Caesars Palace, but I just was like not interested in buying anything from them. So I kept skipping it, but I think that if I can go see the collection in person, then I might be excited or just Inglot in general because I've heard very good things about the brand. The next thing I am glad I didn't buy is the Manny, Manny Life's a Drag palette. I don't know, you guys. Something about the palette, I feel like it looked beautiful when he revealed it, but I feel like I've seen a lot of videos that say it doesn't really live up to the hype. Like, it's an okay palette, and... I, I'm not a big fan of many to begin with, so I'm not just gonna like drop some dollars for an okay palette of shades that I already have like 80 times over in my collection. Uh, like I said, I have been doing a lot of like deep thinking on the collection that I currently have and I have so many eyeshadow palettes, so I don't really need it and I'm glad I didn't buy it and from what I can tell, it wasn't even that great, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other palettes that or products I don't regret buying are both palettes by Laura Lee. The first one was just, I was just like, what? Like, 
I get that she kind of explained in her re reveal video that she's like kind of all over the place so she decided to make the palette kind of all over the place but the packaging on that palette was horrendous and then like the shades were like eh, you know and then the part I don't get is how Laura Lee is managing to come up with so many palettes like so quickly because she is like a self-funded brand apparently. So if any of you work in like the makeup industry, I would really appreciate somebody sharing with the consumers like how long it actually takes to make an eyeshadow palette. If you guys have any articles or YouTube videos that you've seen on that, definitely recommend them to me down below because I just don't understand. Apparently it takes forever to make eyeshadow palettes. Like these are like two, three years in the making but... Somehow they just like are flying off the shelves and like new palettes every day. Um, so anyway, yeah, the first one, Cat's Pajamas, was woof. Like that was not an appealing palette. And then she kind of streamlined it and made this like nudie patootie palette, which branding wise I think was more on a point branding wise just because it was like a sleek palette. It looked her age. Like it was a mature looking palette. It did look like somebody just like fucking threw some roses in and like pink and glitter and god it was a oof. anyway so that one looked more appealing my only problem with that palette is it just looked like it was more for light skin tones a lot more like cool tone shades in there so it wasn't something that drew me in i've heard that that palette is a lot better than her first palette but i will not be purchasing either of them not a huge fan of laura lee so i'm okay with it I'm going to be sleeping just fine at night. So another thing I passed on is the NARS Orgasm Collection. Now I actually am a huge fan of NARS, which I I kind of like cringe because they aren't cruelty free. And I'm not completely cruelty free um, as a makeup consumer, but I want to get there eventually. I just need to find like other things that work better than like NARS. And NARS Sheer Glow is like my baby because I have so many like memories attached to that foundation. It's a foundation I wore on my wedding day and all that jazz. So I love, love that foundation to death. And so I have a hard time like replacing it in my collection. But the Orgasm collection, so Orgasm blush was like the first high-end blush I like ever laid hands on. Bought it in college, went through it. I don't think I ever bought it a second time, but I just remember Orgasm blush and you know, being in Sephora and having somebody help me pick it out and blah, 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 blah. So I was really intrigued by the collection. There was a, like a face powder, uh, they did like a lip balm and then they have like a bunch of other things that they launched and then they did like a special limited edition orgasm blush compact and I kind of wanted it, but honestly, I feel like NARS orgasm is like, it used to be a cool shade, but now I feel like I'm so much more about highlighters. I like throw blush on as like an afterthought almost to my makeup collection. I do love the Neo blush by Kevin Aquan in Sunset. That is like my favorite blush right now for the summertime. But other than that, it's not something like I go out of my way to spend a ton of money on. I feel like there's a lot of like affordable, you know, blushes as well. So and yeah, I just skipped on the whole thing and I'm totally okay with it. So. Yeah, that was one I don't regret not buying. And then the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the Dose of Colors Block Party eyeshadows. I am so happy that, I don't know. So I had a bad experience with Dose of Colors. If you guys have been watching me for a while, I bought the Desi and Katie palette, hated that eyeshadow palette, and I believe the Dose of Color formula in the Block Party eyeshadows seems to be just like the ones they had in the Desi and Katie collection. And I just didn't enjoy like using my fingers, I just thought that palette was expensive and these, the block party eyeshadows are $20. There are some beautiful shades. I know the blue is like sucking everybody in. I even recently saw my friend Nisha had bought two of the shades from the block party collection but I'm so fine like keeping my money and not giving it to Dose of Colors. I've just not been very impressed with the brand in general. I do think they make a damn good liquid lipstick though. Their eyeshadows leave me something to be desired so it was an easy pass for me. Okay guys, that is everything in this video of makeup I don't regret not buying. Let me know some of the makeup you don't regret not buying. I'd be so curious to hear from y'all. I wanna make more of these videos, uh, but I am trying to make my videos a little bit more like easy to watch because I feel like I can go on and on and on in my videos. So let me know if you guys like shorter videos, longer videos, what your preference is, and definitely let me know some products you don't regret not buying. 
I love talking to you guys, so I will catch you in my next video soon. Bye, guys.